Hi folks, it's uh, Big John here. Now I hope you're all following the government guidelines and managing to avoid the nasty virus that's affecting the world right now. We'll all be glad and thankful for sure when it's over and we can live our lives again as we wish. All my 2020 biking trips have been postponed and even though the sun is out now, it's probably going to be quite a while before I'm allowed to ride my bike again. So it's got to be time to relive another one of my past adventures. Now this one was my longest solo trip, nearly 5,000 miles to Norway, up into the Arctic Circle, uh, the land of the midnight sun, and then back home via Sweden, known as the land of 100,000 lakes. This one turned out to be a really good adventure. Norway is about a third larger in area than the UK, um, but there's only five million people that live there. It's the uh, land of the Vikings. Uh, it's got fantastic scenery, great roads, lots of beautiful smiley blonde girls, uh, very expensive alcohol, very low speed limits, and I can tell you very keen traffic cops. So uh, stay tuned now and relive this adventure with me and I'll tell you how, uh, how the, my brush with the Norwegian police up in the Arctic Circle forced me to make a, a rapid change of plan midway through the trip, which actually in turn created a whole new adventure which turned out to be a really good one. I've done a lot of research about Norway over the winter months and on the 11th of July 2018 I set off for the Channel Tunnel and then to ride nearly 1,000 miles to the top of Denmark to catch a ferry to Norway. An overnight ferry from Herschel's in Denmark would take me to Bergen in Norway and then I would ride up the west coast ferry hopping across the fjords on the way taking in the very best twisty uh, roads and scenery and then on to ride the amazing Atlantic Coast Highway to Trondheim and from there head further north into North Norway and crossing the Arctic Circle into land of the midnight sun. From there visiting the picturesque Lofoten Islands. The plan would then be to ride back via a different route calling in at the capital Oslo before catching a ferry back to Denmark. The route from Calais to Herschel's needed to be all motorway, simply to enable as much distance to be covered as possible in the shortest time. That first night I stopped in Antwerp and it was the night of the World Cup semi-final between England and Croatia. I watched it in an Irish pub which was packed with very noisy Brits and Croatian supporters. Had a great night but uh, England lost 2-1 unfortunately. Back on the motorway in the morning I was soon onto the no speed limit German autobahn 
where I could cruise at a hundred mile an hour but even then the Mercs and the Audis came flashing past as, I, as if I was standing still. At one point I noticed some motorbike headlights way off in the distance behind me. Suddenly three Suzuki Hayabusa motorbikes came screaming past me flat out and dis I made good progress and decided to pull off the motorway somewhere in Denmark for a break. It was now 29 degrees C. Um, that summer turned out to be one of the hottest on record. I found a nice little marina on the coast to stop at to eat a sandwich before riding the last 50 kilometres to Herschel's. I arrived with a couple of hours to kill. Not much there apart from lots of fishing boats and windswept ferry port. In the queue for the ferry I got chatting to several Swedish and Dutch bikers. Finally we boarded and tied down our bikes for the crossing. Now this ship was quite new. Uh, I'd actually booked a mini deluxe cabin for the overnight crossing. I reckon I deserved it after three days on the motorway. That was really nice. Had a TV, a proper bed rather than the bunk beds I've been used to on crossings to Spain with Brittany ferries. I also had a porthole to watch the world through. Arrival at Bergen in Norway would be 12.30 the next day, uh, midday. It was calm crossing, slept well and uh, after a good breakfast I went on deck to watch as the boat sailed close to the coast between the islands and the fjords on the approach to Bergen. The hotel check-in was not until 4pm so I'd planned a 70 mile loop uh, to kill some time and get the feel of riding in Norway and see some of the surrounding countryside. I was soon into some great scenery. Uh, it seems that almost all the drivers stick to the speed limits but some will do a racy 90 kilometers per hour, 55 miles an hour, out of town. One of the benefits of these slow speeds is I'm getting 68 miles to the gallon out of the GS. The best I've ever had before is 54. Now the town of Bergen is a port of call for the large cruise liners and at this time of year it's full of tourists. It has the famous and picturesque Brigan by the harbour with its painted buildings. It was Saturday night and the place was busy I walked down to the outdoor fish market with its many stalls cooking fresh fish that you can eat on the spot. It's Sunday 15th of July, 210 miles to ride to a small town called Helle up in the mountains and on the banks of a large lake. The morning was cloudy, about 15 degrees C. Several people told me I was lucky as it normally rains 360 days out of 365 in Bergen. There was very little traffic and the road was soon sweeping bends, smooth tarmac, lovely scenery interspersed with the odd tunnel through the mountains. I kept to touring speeds uh, most of the time. After an hour or so I was descending a mountain on a lovely flowing road and came to a tight bend. My sat-nav suddenly told me board ferry and the road finished abruptly on a ferry dock which is the means of crossing the large ford ahead um, as it continues the road. I had read that on a, on a motorbike you should just ride to the front of the car queue as the ferry crew like to fit bikes into spaces that are too small for cars. So I did. It worked and none of the car drivers seemed upset with me for jumping the queue. 
The crossing took 30 minutes and cost £7. I was pleased to have survived what was to be the first of many such fjord crossings on this trip. After disembarking I took it easy, soaking up the stunning scenery and enjoying the great roads. This is what I came for. I arrived at Halle around 5pm, a very small town with just a few houses and the hotel was right on the shore of the lake, surrounded by mountains with snow on the peaks. My room opened out directly onto a fantastic view. This place is so quiet and peaceful. After a nice dinner in the hotel I went exploring around town and walking the banks of the lake finished off with a coffee on the bench outside my room looking at those snow-capped mountains. Fabulous. Definitely one of those moments. Now the next morning it was beautifully sunny and warm. Uh, still water in the lake and snow on the mountain tops. What a great place to live in summer. Now Halle to Alley Sound today, 173 miles approximately to ride, uh, visiting the famous Garangia Ford Fjord on the way and then riding Trollestigen, the mountain road and twisty pass known as the Troll Staircase. Now trolls are mythical Scandinavian characters, ugly giants that turn to stone in the sunlight, which is why they often hide under bridges. Now instead of taking the main road from the hotel, I took what looked like an interesting, very twisty route through the most amazing valley between the mountains, uh, probably created by a glacier millions of years ago. It was desolate, covered with big rocks, uh, the waterfalls and a couple of lakes. The road started out um, with nice new tarmac, but after 10 kilometres turned into a broken surface covered with loose gravel. Now as I put my way along I remember thinking this is not a good place to fall off. Uh, it's very remote. Uh, I did see a camper van and there were a couple of people wild camping. Stunning scenery uh, and then about 40 kilometres further on uh, it joined a major road uh, with a 90 kilometer per hour speed limit so a chance to make up time uh, fast sweeping bends heading for the famous Garangia Ford. Now soon I came upon the need for another road ferry crossing. Now this time rolled up just as they were about to leave and the guy waved me forward and squeezed me in between a car and a camper van and then we we're off. It actually makes quite a nice little break from riding. Now riding along another great road between the mountains I came to a vantage point and stopped for a picture. I was sitting there looking at the view when I noticed a couple with a car and a caravan serving themselves coffee. The man saw me looking and shouted cafe and he beckoned me over. I spent half an hour chatting with this middle-aged Norwegian couple from Lillehammer. That is one of the benefits of riding alone. You can meet so many different people uh, that you probably just wouldn't if you were riding with a group of friends. So on the rain road again I stopped at uh, another vantage point high above the Garanger Ford looking down um, at the uh, spectacular view down to the fjord where you can see the ocean going cruise liners that come all the way in from the sea. Now the road down to the fjord was narrow with lots of tight hairpin bends uh, a nightmare when you get two coaches that meet. Uh, all the cars, camper vans and coaches all backed up. Just managed to thread my way through on the bike but um, hard and slow going. And now it was hot, high 20s degrees C. So next stop Trollestigen, the Troll Staircase. Now this is a very steep twisty road with uh, tight hairpin bends all the way down to a massive mountainside and a bit like the Stelvio in, in Italy. Running down the mountains a big waterfall and I rode all the way down dodging the coaches and the camper vans on the way. Finally reached the bottom and stopped to take some pics of the waterfall. I parked up between uh, two Norwegian bikers um, and we had a nice chat. Everybody speaks English, 
They don't see many English bikers or cars this far north, so it seems I'm a bit of a novelty. After a while the road joined a major route heading for Alisan. Um, still nearly 100 kilometres to go. It's 28 degrees C. I, I've got to say I was feeling hot and tired and thankfully this road passed through several long tunnels. One of them 8 kilometres long. Uh, the temperature in, in those were only 18 degrees C. So pleasant respite from the heat and a chance to play silly boy with my noisy exhaust in the tunnel. Couldn't resist it. The final 40 kilometres into Alison was a drag, but the road was fast. I ignored the 80 km per hour speed limit and blitzed the few cars that were there, 120, and making a good progress. I had uh, booked an economy room at a hotel a few kilometres out of town and when I checked in the receptionist said my room was in this little building away from the main hotel. It turned out to actually be a mini motel. It was a small room but had all I needed so another day ends happy. Now tomorrow I ride the amazing Atlantic Coast Highway on the way further north to Trondheim. Day 7, uh, 17th July and it's Alessand to Trondheim via the Atlantic Coast Highway 241 miles. I actually stayed up till 11.30 last night just as the sun was beginning to set. Best night's sleep yet. Nice sunny morning but no sign of breakfast. So headed into town, had a coffee and croissant while filling up with petrol. It will be a long day including two more ferry crossings. The first 90 kilometres are on good sweeping road. Once the cars were disposed of I could settle down to a steady 110 km per hour cruise. Then came the first ferry of the day. I rode past a long line of cars waiting to get on board and uh, um, it was a 12 km long crossing this time and cost about £8. After the ferry, more great road along the coastline and across the small islands. For long stretches I had that road to all to myself. I saw a place to stop and pulled in for a drink to look at the scenery. Soon a big transit type van pulled up and I noticed it had Irish plates. Said hello and met this very nice couple, about 50, who would given up the rat race and were just touring around wherever their fancy took them. I must move on, it's 1pm and I'm not even halfway. Finally I reached the Atlantic Coast Highway and the famous bridge which I don't think I can pronounce. bridge um, did my best to try and video holding my iPhone. Great scenery and the road just uh, hopped between the islands. 
Nice ride and so different to riding the lanes back home. Time for lunch soon and this time um, it was a hot dog served by yet another pretty smiley blonde girl who spoke perfect English. Often another fantastic smooth windy road and then the second ferry crossing of the day. Got loaded next to two German bikers, turned out to be father and daughter. They'd driven up in their camper van with a couple of enduro bikes on the back. It was now late afternoon and still a hundred kilometres to Trondheim. Once I'd cleared the cars from the ferries, I had the road to myself. Beautiful, smooth, open, flowing road with sweeping corners running along the side of a fjord and then uh, through a forest. Time to wind it up and have some fun. Now this road went on like this for 60 kilometres. Fantastic. I was actually getting rather tired and the temperature was climbing so I stopped for a rest at a picnic area. Had to laugh when I saw a poster advertising Susie Quattro playing locally. Googled and found she's 68, still going strong obviously. <laughs> Finally arrived in Trondheim, by now it was 30 degrees C, very humid and feeling like it was going to be a storm. I checked in the hotel and soon after it rained which cleared the air to make a nice evening. I had a £12 pint of IPA in the Three Lions English pub across the road, followed by a curry in the local Indian. <laughs> home from home, apart from the price. Uh, then I had a stroll around the harbour and off to bed. It's now day eight. It's going to be a long day today. Trondheim to Moirana. 300 miles and crossing the Arctic Circle on the way. Got on the road at 8.30, took a while to clear Trondheim through long dark tunnels and a very long boring average speed camera 70 km per mile stretch. Then thankfully it opened out and the road now flowing with the opportunity to make progress passing large lakes and tree clad mountains with the scent of pine on the air. Pushing on further north, no traffic for long stretches, winding along past lakes, rivers, through pine forests, all with a display of lovely pink flowers along the roadside. What a great ride. Just doing my own thing. Houses are few and far between and this is now getting very remote and I can see snow top mountains in the distance. I then reached the official point of entering the Arctic Circle in North Norway, Nord Norge. Photo opportunity. So it's now day 9, uh, Thursday 19th of July 2018. The plan was to ride further north from Moirana, past the Arctic Circle Centre and on to the Lofoten Islands. But all did not go to plan. I set off in the morning and the heavens opened and continued for about 30 minutes. But I could see it was getting lighter up ahead and indeed it stopped and blue sky started to appear. After a couple of hours the terrain changed and became treeless and barren with snow-capped mountains. Soon I came upon the Arctic Circle Centre, so pulled in to take some pictures. Nice German man with a massive mobile home saw me trying to do a selfie and offered to take my pic. At the top of the hill there's lots of stone mounds known as cairns and people build them as a memento to their visit to the Arctic Circle. So I'm now inside the Arctic Circle, well inside. It's remote, there are no houses, uh, there's long stretches between any signs of life. 
Uh, I was riding along looking at the scenery, straight piece of road, no cars around, when suddenly a policeman jumps out in the road and waves me in. Do you know what the speed limit is? he said. Um, whatever it was, I was obviously exceeding it. He went to check his machine to get my speed and came back to say I was doing 110 kilometers per hour and the speed limit was 70. He then told me that my speed was so excessive that I would be banned immediately and could not drive any more in Norway. I was handed over to another policeman to be processed. He insisted on taking my driving licence there and then and said I must leave Norway and ride to Sweden. The border was just 10 kilometres away. Hmm, strange their speed trap was so near the border with Sweden. Anyway, I was actually thinking of coming back via Sweden. So Sweden it is. I'd seen over a thousand miles of Norway and reached the Arctic Circle. I'm happy with that. So unfortunately I never made it to my next planned stop, the Lofoten Islands. Instead I got on to booking.com and cancelled the next few hotels and the ferry back to Denmark. Thankfully all without penalty and then I set off for Sweden. Now Sweden's twi nearly twice the size of the UK and has a population of only 10 million and there's nothing much in the far north where I am apart from lakes and forests Owen reindeer. A quick look at the map showed that as I couldn't now take the ferry from Norway to Denmark as planned I would need to ride to Malmo the tip of Sweden a thousand miles south of my current position and then cross to Denmark by road. As I followed the road up through the mountains it started to rain heavily on my way to Sweden a few kilometres further on, thankfully, I came to a petrol station, pulled in to fill up, have a coffee and figure out a route. And there was another biker there who was sheltering from the rain, and he came over and asked where I was going. I said I didn't know, as I'd just been thrown out of Norway for speeding. He then said, well, so have I. Do you want some coffee? <laughs> what a coincidence. And his name was Klaus, and he was Danish. So Klaus and I chatted about our speeding experiences in Norway. Turned out he was a really nice guy and also had a GS like mine. He was well travelled on his bike and we swapped stories and bonded due to our respective misfortunes. We discussed routes. Both of us had to go south and then Klaus would branch off to the east and pick up the motorway via Stockholm to Denmark. This was the quickest route. I now had two days to kill. So my plan was to ride down the middle of Sweden to Malmo at its southern tip and then cross the bridge to Denmark to pick up my original route through Germany and the Netherlands back to Calais. But it's a thousand miles from here just to Malmo. And we decided to ride together until it was time for Klaus to branch off, which would be several hundred miles further on. Where we might stay that night was anyone's guess. He had a tent, but I didn't. So it was now late afternoon, we set off on the road south. And this part of Sweden is very remote, it's all forests and lakes and very few houses, no towns and no hotels, only camping sites. I had visions of ending up in one of those for the night. The roads are straight through dense forests with reindeer just wandering in the road. Why, when they've got all that forest to play in? After a few hours we came to a small town called Sturman. I pulled over and suggested we got something to eat. It was 7.30 by now. And we had a pizza and found that there was a, a hotel in the town that had a twin. So we went for the twin and shared the cost. I decided that sharing with a stranger was better than one of those little huts. And when I called home that night, my dear wife was horrified. Uh, what if this guy Klaus murdered me in the night and took all my money? Then we sat up chatting till late and then it was bedtime. So earplugs in. Now Friday 20th of July, uh, it's day 10. Had a good breakfast, chatted some more and then we set off south again. After a couple of coffee stops and several hours riding it was time to part with Klaus. 
We shook hands, swapped telephone numbers. I suppose the whole experience was a bit weird, really, thinking about it. But that's what adventure's all about, and there's definitely a bond between bikers. I had no idea where I would end up that night, so just kept riding through more forests, more lakes, all very beautiful, till I could find a town big enough to have hotels. I stopped for petrol and spotted a, a reindeer meat wrap. Decided I had to try that, especially as I'd been dodging them on the road for the last couple of days. Tasted rather like smoked ham. It was 9pm at night when I came to Mora, a large town on a big lake. But there were five hotels in town. It was Friday night, and obviously a busy tourist spot. The first four hotels were full, but thankfully the fifth had a room. After a good breakfast I did some route planning. Over the next two days, which would be day 11 and 12, the idea was to make it down to Malmo and then ride across the bridge to Denmark and that's the one in the TV program. Then round Copenhagen across the rest of Denmark to Flensburg just across the Danish border in Germany. Around 700 miles and uh, from there I'd be able to pick up my original route home. I booked ahead a, a, a hotel for the first night at a town called Jongkopping and set off south again. The road twisted through some great scenery, forests and lakes. Swedes love their lakes, camping by them, boating and swimming. It really is a very nice country away from the towns. I bought a sandwich for lunch, so I needed to find somewhere to eat it. I turned up on a small side road which led to yet another lake. I spotted a grassy track which led right down to the lakeside and thought, well, I'll give it a try. I was driving along the main road and uh, looking for somewhere just to have my sandwich and I saw this little grassy track and I thought hmm there's a lake down there so let's have a look so I rode down and I found this beautiful little place on the lake and obviously somebody owns this um, but there's no one around at the moment um, so I went out onto that little pier and sat on their chair on the lake and had my lunch and isn't that beautiful wouldn't it be lovely to own something like this by the time I got to Malmo I realized I'd ridden a thousand and fifty miles nearly the whole length of Sweden thank you Norwegian police by now the forests and lakes have been left well behind. It's all motorway, lots of trucks, cars and urban sprawl for the rest of the way home now. Such a difference to the remote and beautiful countryside I've been riding through. The toll for the Sweden-Denmark bridge was 10 euros for a bike and 23 for a car. It's 16 kilometers long. Soon I was on the main Danish motorway riding south and came to my planned stop for the night, Flensburg, Germany, an old town with a nice harbour. So it's now time for the long ride home, 700 plus miles from Flensburg. I still have one day in hand due to the sudden change of plan and decided to spend a rest day relaxing in Groningen in the north of the Netherlands before moving on to Amsterdam and then home. Boring hot motorway miles, but driving in Germany on the motorway is certainly a change from the nanny state of Norway with its minimal speed limits. Here if you want to max your car or bike out you can. After a couple of fuel stops and 15 kilometres of filtering in roadwork jams, I saw my first windmill. Welcome to the Netherlands. Sitting outside the hotel bar later, watching the world on a bicycle go by, a funny thing happened. I heard the thumping noise of Harley Davidson's approaching. Now two of them stopped right outside the hotel. The guys had Hells Angels Norway jackets on. Turned out to be a couple of late middle-aged dudes 
who got off two top of the range modern Harleys, big fairings with speakers, built in, sat nav, etc., and panniers. Really not Hell's Angels material at all. Must be getting soft in Norway. Did make me laugh. Arrived in Amsterdam, found the hotel remarkably easy. Got to the room and could smell the marijuana from the coffee shop next door. Had to close the window, otherwise I'd be away with the fairies. Don't you just love the Dutch people? Thursday 26 July, last day, day 16. My last hot 400 mile motorway day, including Belgian Roadworks, Channel Tunnel and the dreaded M25 in the UK. The temperature reached 40 degrees in a traffic jam around Antwerp and the Eurotunnel train was an hour late. Arrived home at 9 o'clock at night. Uh, just over four and a half thousand miles in all, uh, 7,300 kilometres, time for a cold beer. A week or so later, I had a call from Klaus. Um, he'd just received a letter from the Norwegian police fining him the UK equivalent of 1,500 pounds. Ouch! That is nasty. It got me worrying and waiting for the postman every morning. But to my surprise, to this day, the postman never knocked on my door. Now this was a great trip and a real adventure in many ways. It was great to meet Klaus and he left me this message on my blog site. And I put it exactly as he wrote it. Well, reliving that Norway trip brought back some great memories for me. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, Norway has some really very picturesque scenery, um, some great riding roads, and once you reach the Arctic Circle, um, it is remote and you've got the road completely to yourself. It's a good idea to keep the touring speeds though and uh, keep an eye out for speed traps. Um, Everybody speaks English, so uh, and if you're into camping, you'll, you'll love Norway. There's plenty of campsites, and we'll certainly keep the cost down uh, of a trip like this. If you don't drink alcohol, even better. And if you do, uh, maybe a great opportunity to cut down for a few days and save some money. The only downside with Norway is it's a, a long way from the UK. There used to be a direct ferry, but um, that doesn't operate anymore. So you have to ride up to Denmark and get a ferry from there. Um, my diversion into Sweden was really a good bonus. Um, if you like lakes and forests and camping, it's a great place to ride through. Now this has been my longest uh, solo ride uh, yet. And whilst I do enjoy riding with others, I have to say, riding alone provides the opportunity to totally do your own thing. Um, go where you want, stop when you want, chat with all kinds of people along the way, and enjoy the comradeship of other bikers of all nationalities, and of course, test your ability to cope with the unexpected. Now right now, I'm not sure where my next riding adventure will go to. But wherever it is, I'm planning to use my action camera for the first time to record it. 
Now whether that be in the UK or my postponed Eastern European trip or the big one I'm planning for 2021, Alaska and the Canadian Rockies. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and if so, stay tuned for more adventures. So bye for now, keep safe and ride safe.